Hello, welcome to Bullet. So I've got a really quick video today. Um, I've been messing around with a new project I've been working on involving a NeoPixel, an Arduino, and some batteries, and a skateboard, but um, I actually struggled quite a lot with the NeoPixel library. Um, I thought it was a lot easier than it actually was. Fuck NeoPixels. This, how do they work? So while learning how to use it, I figured why not make a really quick video and show you guys how to use it as well if you don't know how to already. Um, so let's just jump straight in. I want to make this video as short as possible. So first things first, go ahead and load the NeoPixel library into your Arduino IDE if you haven't already. It really is easy just clicking on uh, manage libraries and then searching NeoPixel and then clicking include or whatever it says. Now with it in your library, you should be able to access the examples. If you've used the NeoPixel before, you're probably quite familiar with these examples. And you would have noticed that a lot of them are just, just really complicated. Like, for the, the first time I used a NeoPixel, I went into the library and into the examples, clicked on one, and I was kind of just blown away about the, like, the amount of code in this, time, in this like, really simple function of just making this thing light up. So, for the most part, the examples um, have so much complicated code in them because for the most part, it's doing some really cool stuff like flashing the lights and doing sequences and rainbows and stuff like that. Um, which are all functions. You would notice they all have their own function. They're all void rainbow or void um, fade in or whatever. So those look a bit complicated, but it's because they're performing an advanced function. If we want to start at the very beginning, it actually gets quite simple. And the way Adafruit has actually designed the library is quite user-friendly when we start with the easier sketches. So the best thing to do is to load up one of the examples, not the complicated one, but the uh, simpler ones, and what better example than the simple example in the actual example. So go ahead and click on simple example. I'm saying example a lot. Um, in the simple example, you should see, uh, it's quite basic, there's only a couple of lines of code, and it starts off just like any other sketch. It's got hashtag include and then the library, and of course the library we're including is the Adafruit NeoPixel. Now, the first important piece of code, I mean, you can skip this code here, it's just there to define that, um, it's just there to make it supportive for AVR boards, and we're using Arduino right now, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Now, anyway, the first really important piece of code is this hashtag define pin 6. Now, at this stage, is we're saying that pin 6 on Arduino is going to be the pin that controls the NeoPixel. So you see here, on my Arduino, my NeoPixel is plugged into pin 6, and then into power and ground, obviously for power and ground. So. If I were to change this to pin 7, I could then move the control pin to pin 7. You can change it to whatever pin you want, as long as you change it here. Now, the second piece of important code is this hashtag define num pixels. Now, if you have a super long NeoPixel string of 20 pixels, you gotta go and change this value to 20. My NeoPixel has 8 LEDs on it, so we, I need to change my value to 8. This helps the sketch uh, know how many pixels are in your string, so when you perform advanced functions, you can say, light up each um, LED off each other, and it would know to stop on the 20th because you have 20. For, in my case, it would know to stop on the 8th because I have 8. So again, it's just making the library a bit easier to use and a bit more user-friendly. Now here we have this long piece of code here, and this is um, something we don't need to worry about too much. There aren't that many values we can mess with in there. It just tells the um, Arduino more information about the NeoPixel and how to control it. You'll even see here, you'll recognize it says um, num pixels and pin. So we could actually remove those values and just put 8 and 6 if we wanted to in there. But again, this makes it more user friendly by putting those values there. But again, it's just referencing those values, so nothing too complicated. Um, then here in the, uh, the void setup, we've got another if command, uh, which is just there again to support the AVR boards, like the 80 tiny 85 uh, which all it does is it just sets the clock speed to a different clock speed if you're using that board. But we're not, again, we're using Arduino, so don't worry about that. And then the last thing in the void setup is pixel.begin, which starts the NeoPixel. So now here in our void loop, we've got this code here. Now to explain what this code does, let me just take a look at the next line of code first for it to make more sense. So we've got this code here that says pixel.setPixelColor. Now obviously this is used to set the color of the pixels and all the values in there help us choose which pixel and which color to set it to. So the first value we have here is which pixel we want to control. So if I change this value to, let's say, uh, 3 for example, and upload, you'll notice that the third uh, NeoPixel on my string will light up. And there we go, there's the third NeoPixel on my string. Now you may notice this isn't actually a third one. If you count one, two, three, four, it's actually the fourth. This is because it doesn't start at zero, it starts at one. So the first NeoPixel on my string is zero, the second is one, the third is two, and the fourth is number three. So if I set the uh, 
first NeoPixel to light up, I would have to type zero, and then we should see the first one there light up. And if I want the last NeoPixel to light up, I just gotta change the value to seven, which will be the last one on my string. Again, if you have a longer string, obviously the values will be higher, but for my specific uh, NeoPixel, the highest value is seven. And there we go. So you also notice that right now it's a green color. So to change the color, we look at the next value in that, in that uh, piece of code. We've got pixel.color, and right now it's set to zero, 150, and zero. These three values here are the RGB values. The first value is uh, red, second value is green, and the third value is blue. So right now green is set to 150, and that's why it is showing up quite green. Now, if I were to go and set the red val value to 150 as well, we would get a mix of red and green, which is like an orangey type color, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like a kind of like yellow, kind of like mustard color. So we can mix and match colors as we please. And if we want to turn a color off, we set it to zero. So zero equals zero percent. And if we want the color to be as bright as it possibly can be on the pixel, we set it to the max value, which is 255. So if I wanted to make this very, very blue, I would set the 255, uh, I would set the blue value to 255. And we should see it now becomes quite blue. If I get rid of the uh, red and green value and change this to zero, it would be even more blue, but this is just good enough for the example. Cool. Now you may have noticed that the value we had to um, set the individual NeoPixels on or off was initially not set to a number, but it was set to I. Now I is actually really important. So you'll see if we change it back to I and we upload the sketch, you'll notice that now it actually cycles and turns on the LEDs individually in a, in a string. So that's without any coding or having, having to do it ourselves, we just change that value to I. Now what's happening here is it's taking the number value and it's adding one to it. So it starts off with zero, then it pluses one to zero and it gets one, so it turns this one on. Pluses one to one, it gets two, turns this one on. Pluses one to two, gets three, turns on the next one, all the way to the last NeoPixel. So that's how we're able to create a very basic function which turns them on after each other um, using some really basic code. Now if we take a look at that actual code, you'll see here it's got i is equal to zero, so i is equal to the first NeoPixel and we've got num pixels was equal to i plus plus. So it's saying that we're gonna start on zero and we're gonna plus one to each um, near pixel. We can do it the other way if we want to by changing i to seven. So we change i to start on the last near pixel, this one here. And then instead of saying plus, we say minus. We start here and we go backwards. So we change this plus plus to minus minus. And then we upload it. And now we've got it moving backwards. And that's how to create really basic functions with a NeoPixel. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you guys want to keep seeing videos like these or if I should just stick to the full length project videos. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see that future upcoming video that uses the NeoPixel and the skills we learned today. Uh, also, the Patreon page is now up if you want to support the channel. And thanks again for watching.